The steps for forming a corporation is to first pick out your company's name. Then you have to write and file articles of incorporation paperwork. We have these right at the downtown center if you'd like to take a look at them. Then you have to pay your fees and taxes and you do have to hold organizational meetings. And finally, you have to adopt bylaws, elect your directors, and pass operating resolutions. Here's a chart that depicts the organizational structure of corporations. Stockholders are responsible for electing the board of directors. In turn, directors hire the officers or top-level managers. There are a few different types of hybrid corporations. S corporations are organized like a regular corporation, but they are able to avoid double taxation of profits by routing income and losses through their stockholders. Limited liability companies offer the same limited liability as a corporation, but they are taxed either as a partnership or a corporation. Here are some specialized forms of business organizations to include cooperatives, joint ventures, and franchises. I'll explain these in detail in the slides that follow. Cooperatives are formed by people with similar interests, such as customers or suppliers. When they form cooperatives, they're able to lower their costs, increase their economic power, and share in profits. The members or owners pay annual fees, and they're very common within, within agriculture, within grocery, and with hardware and lumber. Cooperatives are popular because it makes it possible for smaller companies to work together to share their resources and remain competitive. For example, hardware stores like Ace or True Value, they're able to compete with uh, places like Home Depot because they're able to buy in bulk and their marketing isn't as expensive. A joint venture is when two or more companies form an alliance to pursue a specific project, and it's usually for a specific period of time. For example, Microsoft and Citibank got together to form a nationwide online billing and bill paying service. Obviously, they each have their specialties. One is in software, and the other one is in banking. Together, they were able to combine the services they offered to serve specific clients for a specific need. Franchising is a business organization where a franchisor supplies the product concept to the franchisee who sells the goods or services. You can probably think of numerous examples just around Fairbanks to include fast food places like McDonald's or Wendy's. Within building, there's California Closets. That's a franchise as well. With a franchise, there's usually an increased opportunity to expand. There's already a recognized name, product, and operating concept in place. Pretty much everyone around the world has heard of McDonald's. There's management training and assistance that's available. There's also financial assistance that franchisers will, will help with um, to include getting you a good interest rate with a bank. But there are also some disadvantages to franchises. For one, the loss of control. Uh, if you decide to open up a McDonald's, you can't put Betty's McDonald's on the sign, and you can't decorate it how you want. There's a very specific layout that McDonald's has for their franchises. There's the cost of the franchising. For example, many franchises expect you to attend training seminars. They expect you to build to a specific code requirement, and that can all be very costly. And there's also restricted operating freedom. Most franchisers expect franchisees to run their business in a very specific way. Mergers and acquisitions happen all the time within business. A merger is the combination of two or more firms to form a new company, which often takes on a new corporate identity. For example, when Exxon and Mobile Oil merge together. An acquisition is when one company purchases another company. For example, when Daimler-Benz took over Chrysler. 
Some benefits of mergers is that it reduces costs, it reduces overlap in operations, and reduces their competition. In addition, it increases purchasing power and their market share. There's several different types of mergers. There's a horizontal merger, which means that the businesses are in the same industry at the same stage of production. For example, this would be if, let's say, Big Rays and Beaver Sports were to merge together. A vertical merger is when there's two companies in the same industry, but they're in different stages of production. For example, AOL buys upcoming companies, small companies, that address different Internet needs. Conglomerate mergers are when two completely different industries come together. For example, you open up a hotel in Fairbanks, who would you want to merge with? Maybe Riverboat Discovery because they already bring in a lot of clientele. Another example is how many stores have merged with internet savvy companies to take their stores online. They don't necessarily have the, the the technological expertise to take their merchandise and sell it online, so they merge with internet companies that can do that for them. And then there's the leverage buyout. This is when there's a corporate takeover with borrowed money. This means that a company would buy all the stock of another company to take it private. Some trends you can expect to see within business organization is an increase in niche markets, the, an increase in the variety of franchises out there. There are going to be more franchise goods and services that help busy consumers. There will be an in increase in consolidation through mergers and acquisitions, and there will also be more mergers across national borders.